What's up, guys? Uh, welcome back to another video of um, Adolf Hitler and the emergence of Adolf Hitler. I've said this before, I'll say it again. This is like the transition from Unit 7 into Unit 8. So this video is probably the last one that's living in both worlds and in both of those units, the path to global war Germany and then the rise of authoritarian states, Adolf Hitler, right? Um, so let's just get into it. Um, let me go back first. As you can see, in 1932, the Nazis have a large portion of the Reichstag, okay? Essentially, what Adolf Hitler um, is going to do is vie for more political power, right? Um, so the Chancellor, von Papen, is going to offer Hitler the role of Vice Chancellor, kind of this, this, this role to appease Adolf Hitler. Get used to me using that word, appease, okay? Um, spoiler alert for stuff coming down the line. And, um, update. Get that out of the way. Alright. Hitler doesn't want that. Alright, Hitler wants to be Chancellor. Okay? Um, essentially, Von Poppen comes up with this idea that essentially lives by the idea of keep your friends close, your enemies closer. So he's saying that Adolf Hitler is doing all of this stuff outside of the government right? The whole paramilitary force and these riots and these protests and these speeches. Maybe if we put him in the position he wants, maybe A, it'll calm him down, and B, he would have to operate within the confounds of the Constitution, right? So essentially, they come up with an idea of giving Hitler the chancellorship. So in 1933, Adolf Hitler is appointed Chancellor of the Reichstag, and President Hindenburg is still the sitting president. That's the beginning of the end, right? That That is that is the... Uh, it, it's all going to go downhill from here, okay? Um, so, a couple things happen. Right after he becomes Chancellor, the Reichstag fire is going to happen. Essentially, the Reichstag building is put on fire, okay? Um, Adolf Hitler uh, is going to kind of orchestrate this from behind the scenes, right? Uh, there's going to be a communist in the building when it all goes down, and Adolf Hitler is going to... Uh, 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 blame the burning down of the Reichstag building on the Communist Party, right? He is going to use that incident, that action, to enact emergency powers, all right? He is going to make the claim that the Communists are trying to overthrow a government, kind of ironic that I'm speaking about this in 2021 because it just happened in America, but he is going to claim that the Communists are trying to overthrow the government. And he is going to enact emergency powers to protect the government. We talked about how significant those powers are in the beginning of this unit with how the Weimar was created. Okay? So, um, uh, the Nazi party uh, um, uh, uh, seats are going to rise from 33 to 44% in the Reichstag under this kind of uh, uh, this, this claim of Adolf Hitler of how he can protect Germany from what's to come. Um, Adolf Hitler is then going to draw up an alliance with the Catholic Party. If that doesn't sound familiar, that's something similar to what Mussolini did. And then he is going to draw up the Enabling Act. Okay, so essentially with this overwhelming percentage of the Reichstag, Hitler is going to um, pass the Enabling Act, which essentially gives the Chancellor permission to govern without consulting the Reichstag whatsoever. OK, so the Enabling Act is the end of democracy in Germany. And this is a very, very fitting quote. Hitler insisted on holding a democratic election to end democracy. All right. One thing you need to note is Adolf Hitler came to power in a constitutional way and he kind of ruined German democracy in kind of a constitutional way. All right. So a lot to wrap your head around there. Um. This is a little bit of uh, of kind of background into the elections of 1933 and what happened there. I just went over it kind of quickly in my head. Uh, not in my head. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, I just went over it in the last slide. Uh, this is a picture of the Reichstag fire. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk about this right here. Right. This is Hitler's kind of emergence to power. All right. Uh, if you've been in class, you've heard me say this, that you can split, let me, you can split a rise of an authoritarian leader into three different parts, right? Emergence to power, 
consolidation of that power, and then maintenance of that power. This is his emergence of power, and as soon as he emerges, he is going to begin to now consolidate that power. Okay? This is how he is going to get the power kind of uh, um, uh, sucked underneath him, if you will. All right. So the first, he is going to make Germany a one-party state. This is all after the Enabling Act, right? So essentially, the only legal political party is the Nazi Party. All right. They are completely in charge of the legal system. Trade unions are going to be banned. Um, other parties are going to be banned. So if you're a communist, you are now breaking the law. Right, so he can have you arrested. He is going to remove all Jews from uh, governmental offices. All right, a lot of big changes happen in this first thing the one party state. Right, next, the Knight of Long Knives. This is one of the most uh, uh, um, infamous knights in Nazi history. Right, this is where Adolf Hitler is going to take out all of his major political opposition. All right. Um, uh, the the SA is going to go out and they are, well, not the SA. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. But his henchmen are going to go out and overnight they are going to arrest some kill, but mostly arrest all of the major political prisoners. One being Ernest Rahm, if we don't remember who he is. He's the leader of the SA, right? He was the leader of Hitler's Nazi army, right? Hitler was very, very, very envious of uh, uh, of of rom and thought that rom had a plot to overthrow him right so he's going to take out rom all right this is going to be the beginning of kind of ending the sa and creating the ss which is a a, a more kind of uh um uh, high ranking almost guard of the nazi party Okay, because now Hitler doesn't need the SA anymore. He's got the German military, right? He's got the actual military to, to kind of execute his biddings. The SA was this powerful organization that was independent before Hitler kind of not took them over, but bought them out, right? So he just gets rid of all the leaders of the SA, inclu including Rom, and he's going to create the SS. Another big one, obviously, he's going to take out a lot of communists. We all know his disdain for communism. And he's going to take out a lot of reporters. A lot of people who have been reporting against Adolf Hitler and his threat are going to be kind of jailed. This is going to be the beginning of the idea of concentration camps right around here. It's these types of people that are going to go into these secluded kind of camps. They're not the concentration camps that we know of yet. Those are not really being built. But this is the beginning of those ideas of locking people far away from the public eye. All right. Then lastly, in 1934... Uh, Hindenburg is going to die, um, uh, natural causes, and Adolf Hitler is going to announce himself as both Chancellor and President, a.k.a. Supreme Leader, a.k.a. the Fuhrer of Germany. All right, so this is how he emerged and then immediately began to consolidate that power. All right, uh, that's it. Pretty quick video. Um, the major things to remember, the difference between consolidation of power and um, uh, emergence of power, Reichstag fire, night of long knives, one party state. Those are the big ticket items from this video. Let me know if, if you have any questions. As always, be good.